Hi folks, I'm Anthony Two Guys Ride. Right, today Rob and I are down here in beautiful Des Moines, Iowa. We're at the Concourse d'Elegance and we're here with Andy. Andy, thanks for spending your time with us today. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, Nathan. Now, you have got a beautiful uh, car behind us here. Tell us what it is. It's a 1916 Cadillac uh, seven-passenger touring car. And there is a fantastic story behind this car, and we will get to that as we go around the car. Um, you know, first of all, uh, this is a multi-generational car. It is. So it's 107, we figured, about 107 Seven. years old. Yeah, 107. And it's been in your family for over 60 years. Right. My adoptive grandfather, Don Scharf, he started, found the car and started restoring it in 1962, 1963. And he and my dad were good friends at the time. And then I came along in 1974, okay. and Dad uh, kind of got me started in the hobby. And as I got old enough to start helping out and doing more and more things around the, the cars and whatnot, Dad got me involved in helping restore this car as well. So, uh, yeah, it's really kind of a third-generation car right now. My son uh, will probably soon be the fourth generation of the car. So That, that is incredible. Now, so your, when your uh, grandfather found it, was it in a drivable shape or was it pretty shot? It was not. It came, I, I have pictures of it being basically a basket case car. He picked it up uh, on a car trailer and a pickup truck, basically, in, in pieces uh, from southern Iowa. And like I said, he started on it, you know, nights, weekends, in between right. things uh, in 1963. And it went to its first car show... I want to think. I want to say it was 1997 or 1998. I, okay, I'll have to so look. But long, long, many, many years of restoration. Uh, Don was an engineer by profession, and he was very, very meticulous in the restoration of the car. Because I mean, his goal, you were saying, was to reproduce our, our, or to have a car at the end that would have been exactly like it was if it was delivered to you at your house right out the dealership floor. Correct, yes. He wanted it to be very, very authentic. There's been very little that's been ever modified on the vehicle. Uh, it is as close as you could find in today's world of a car of what it would look like when it was delivered in 1916 to you uh, brand new. So... All right, and there's more to the story, and we will get to that. But let's, let, you know, let's just start out in the front here. So this must have uh, an electric start? It does. Um, Cadillac pioneered the electric self-starter on their cars, 1913-1914 era. And by 1916, they had developed a starter generator system where it would start the car like a traditional starter on a modern vehicle, but then it would also become a generator and generate electricity to charge the battery in the car as well. Okay. So, and that was one of Cadillac and Delco's pioneering tools and devices that's on the car and makes it kind of unique, so. All right, uh, I absolutely love the large uh, headlamps. Obviously, to open them, they swivel open, don't they? Yes, they do, yep. Just, I mean, it's just, it's just, Yep, there's a little screw you take out, and then they'll swing open to replace the bulbs. All right, so uh, moving to down to tell us a little about the the engine here. So this is a V-type engine, you know, V8 for those you know okay. more modern people. 90 degree, 90 degree V8 okay. is basically if you took two four-cylinder engines, laid them in a, a V shape, and then had a common block between them, okay. uh, or crank between those two two separate engines. Uh, they have two water pumps, one cools each side of the engine, uh, a common timing change, so very, very modern engine, but yet, you know, this was 107 years ago, so some of it's still technology used today, so. Now, um, in continuing a little bit of the story here, sure. so the car, over a long period of time, late 90s gets fully restored right and what happens your grandfather is moving they uh they went don and ruth uh went to retire uh kind of i guess their second retirement yeah okay <laughs> um and they were going to move to mesa arizona and they didn't have any way to take the car with them and don was going to sell the car he was you know kind of done with it it had been yeah. to shows several national awards 
And I was a poor college student at the time. I didn't have two nickels to rub together as, as a college student. But I was, you know, very, very emphatic with Don that he not sell the car. I'm like, it's it's a member of the family, Don. You know, you've worked on it. My dad's worked on it. I've worked on it. We've all bled for it, sweated for it, you know. We, there's too much labor in it for love. Right. And so... I think it was Thanksgiving dinner. It might have been Christmas, one of the last years that they before they moved down okay. there to Arizona. Uh, Don and his uh, his daughter, uh, Linda, who is uh, the co-owner of the vehicle now, uh, she uh, he handed me the envelope with the title to the car and told me that it's your car. Take care of it. Uh, show it. Tell the story about the car. Keep it up. Maintain it. Uh, Linda, his daughter, who's a CPA, she will help with all the financials on the car. So any you know major bills, anything right. that you can't do yourself uh, that incurs costs, she'll help with with that side of it. And so she owns half the car. She lives in Arizona, pays the bills for lack of a better term. I take the car, show it, show it off, get the story out there for people to hear and enjoy. So yeah, that that is just that. So you almost lost it. Almost. After we restored it, and then Almost. it came back. I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure glad you kept it. Now, <laughs> um, I, I, I get a kick out of little things. Rob noticed this earlier, but on the uh, oil fill, it says <laughs> clean, clean oil, oil only. only. Yeah, so there's don't a, put your journey tractor oil. No, no. Uh, one of the funny things in the uh, owner's guide for the car, uh, it says that if you don't have clean oil available, you can take three layers of cheesecloth, drain the old oil out, Strain it through the cheesecloth and put it back in. Really, it says that right in the right wow. in the the owner's guide for how to operate the car. <laughs> now, there, there's one more story before we move on here, and this is oh, this the oil, oil can. can. Now, this yes. is a beautiful. It says Cadillac on it, so it's it's one of the original cans that would have gone in there. Right. Tell us the story about how you found it. So, uh, after Don restored the car, the the, the Cadillac oil can, he, we couldn't find one. Or if we did find one, they were outrageously priced. It was like the only thing left on the car to get. Right. The last thing to make okay. it 100% authentic and restored for, for intents and purposes. Okay. And so after Don retired, I you know inherited the car. And we started looking high and low. I did uh, for uh, the uh, an oil can, an authentic oil can for it. And I came across this one on eBay. The gentleman that had listed it on eBay made a mistake and set a buy it now price on it instead of a starting price. So I snapped up the, the uh, oil can. He contacted me and said, well, that was a mistake. I want to relist it. Oh, no. And I went, ugh. You know, and so I sent him a picture of the car, kind of pled my case to him. He agreed that, yes, it needs to go with the car. So he agreed to sell it to me for $150. Wow. Normally, the cheapest ones we, I was finding were six and $700 at the time. Wow, wow, so wow. quite the steal so of the guy, century. guy who liked cars, obviously. Yeah. And so then I took it and had a plating shop over in Decorah, Iowa, uh, uh, agreed to replate and restore the can for me. And I can't remember if it was the guy's owner's dad or grandfather, somebody, sat for about six months and took and by hand took every little dent and crease out of the can oh man and then replated it all by hand because it looks like it just right. came off this factory <laughs> show i mean that, yep. there's no dents or anything in fact there. i was so nervous about picking it up after he sent me pictures uh my late father and i we drove over uh, took a day off of work, and he and I drove over and picked it up. We did not even have it shipped back to, to uh, Fort Dodge, where oh, I lived man. at the time, because we were both very, very nervous about <laughs> making sure we got the, the, the oil can back. We wanted it back, you know. So, but That is an incredible story. Backing up, let's take a look at the yeah. wheels here. Now, are those actually wooden? Yes, these are what they called wooden artillery wheels, and they're all oak underneath there. Okay. And a lot of times you'll see cars uh, out of this era where the woods, wheels are natural. But again, Don wanted to show the car and, and present it in a way where it was very, very authentic. And so Cadillac had painted the wheels in 1916 to preserve the wood, basically. Right. And so these are uh, actually wooden artillery wheels, type wheels is what they call them. So Okay. And then stepping back here, I mm -hmm. love the... the, the um 
the big wide running board. Sure. Uh, but it's the same as the flooring on the front inside. What Correct. is this flooring? So this is what they call battleship linoleum. It's a material that's kind of a kind of a, a sixteen teens version of vinyl, okay. if it would be. Uh, there's wood underneath, but it's actually something that they would use on ships back then. That's a very waterproof. Uh, and uh, very strong and resilient material for water okay. and other dirt and things like that. So. And was most of that on the car? Or did you have to buy and replace that? Don bought all of that. He okay. found a vendor for that somewhere, I'm going to say in the mid 80s, that okay. still reproduced that material and bought that and laid and cut all that himself. It's a, okay. it's a really interesting material to work with. Now, obviously, the top would have been shot, the seats would have been shot. So yep. how, did, how did you get those restored as authentically as possible? So one of the few things we didn't do on the car ourselves was the interior. Okay. Uh, we took the car, uh, after we had it painted and, and about 70% complete, down to an Amish family uh, in southern Iowa, and they do uh, horse and buggy work for Amish. And they agreed to take on doing the, the seats and the top and the door panels for us. And they actually used Harley Davidson leather. That's the same okay. same leather that you would find on your Harley Davidson okay. seats, jackets, and whatnot. Okay. Uh, and they took about a year to do that, but it again is very, very authentic. It's not packed with foam like modern seats would be. Right. It's actually stuffed with a combination of hog's hair and horse hair in the seats, oh, wow. and that's what gives it kind of that interesting uh, cushion to it, for I guess lack of a better term. <laughs> okay, and then on the top you said you actually had a pattern they could follow. Yep, uh, Don had found a uh, original top that had survived and it uh, was in bad shape but it was good enough that we could reproduce the stitch count and the material and oh, the wow. correct nails. So even the, so stitch even the little count, nail everything. and the yeah. stitch count is all 100% authentic. The, the wow. Amish family that did the top, she actually sewed this on a tr hand treadle sewing machine okay. with the old non-electric yep. type stuff. And that's why it took them so long to do it, but it is a very, very true recreation uh, of the original top. Oh, which speaks to your grandfather's desire to, to get it as right. authentically restored as possible. Yep. Keep it very, very authentic and very original. All right. So, uh, moving to the backside, or the, well, the passenger compartment here, yep. can we open this up and take sure. a look? Absolutely. Okay, so you, you obviously have a guest chair. Yep, these are what the jump seats. Jump, seat. okay. jump seats. And that would have folded up and gone right in this right. little empty your, area here. Yep, your Chrysler uh, stow and go seating is not a, a new thing. Just fold. And, that, oh. and, that, and that's, uh, and that's the other one. one. That's what they look like when they're stored down. And then that's, this is the up position for them. So, <laughs> yeah, Chrysler's, Chrysler's nothing new on that stow and go stuff. This is, uh, this is the this original is stow and go. In the 1960s. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is, uh, um, this, is this the battleship stuff underneath this carpet no, too? No, this is just wood underneath here. Okay. And then this is carpeted, obviously, because this would be where your your passengers would sit, so a little more luxurious. It, so would the carpet have actually had the snaps in it originally? Yes, it would have. That was okay. so, you could, again, pull the carpet up, clean it, uh, dry it out if it had gotten wet for any reason. But again, you know, this was the more luxurious portion of the car so you had carpet back here okay. for your passengers rather than the the battleship linoleum and you must is this just a sewn in pocket or is there nope, actually, a, actually po a little oh, map wow. pocket in you there. can actually uh, put okay mm -hmm. yep huh. those are all authentic. on both sides you got that yep, yep and yep. then um now back here you've got a little almost looks like a riding handle <laughs> like a, <laughs> that's what it looks like help me handle right yeah not um, quite but it was actually for the top? Yeah, so when the top is folded down, these are what they call top saddles or top, um, yeah, top saddles, I guess is the best term to use. But you could open these up and then the top iron portion, these metal pieces, yep. would sit down in here and it would hold the top in place so that as you went down the bumpy roads and it dirt roads, rattle. it would not bounce. Because ah, the bouncing... This is, this would, is a rubber insert on there. Yep, that is. A, Don actually poured and recreated that piece of rubber really? on each side. He found a way to do that wow. and remake those pieces of rubber. Now, uh, in the back, you of course, you've, you've got dual spare tires, not just one. Right. <laughs> Cadillac was very much about not leaving you stranded on the side of the road. So they would gave you two spare tires uh, with the car. So you had one flat, you could keep going. But if you got another flat, most other cars would leave you high and dry. 
not uh, cattle, not cow. they would be able to keep you keep you moving down the road. Now so. you have you have sort of three valves on this end. Oh, you know, yeah, caps. What were they for? Those are uh, what they call priming cups. Uh, grease zerks did not come along until about the 1920s, oh. and so these are the predecessor to a grease zerk. And what okay. you do is they will unscrew. I'm not going to take them apart because they're kind of messy. But you can take these apart, you fill them with grease, and then you just go around and turn them. And these are sticking, of course. Okay, ah. and then it would push the grease push in. Push the grease into the joints. Those are stuck for some reason, another thing I gotta work they on. They need to be greased. Yeah, they need to be greased. <laughs> <laughs> but there's about 50 of those on the car. There's some on the springs, oh, really? there's front suspension, uh, they're in the drivetrain, brakes, uh, transmission levers, all that underneath the car. So, so I, I mean, based on how much you've driven the car, whatever, mm -hmm. If you feel that cap, how long does that cap last before you got to refill it again? Oh, I mean, rough. I it was think like a year, a, a I month? think about three to six months. I think okay. was what the so owner's guide good. says. So pretty good, yeah. And you know what you did is when you would you know service the engine or you had it in at the Cadillac dealer uh, working on the car for you, they would just go around and click all those for you one or two times. Sure. And that's your lubing the, the chassis. And, all, and there's actually a click when you do mm -hmm. it. Yep. They okay. have a little ball bearing in them, and that just kind of goes click click. And that's so you all you need to do. If you've done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. absolutely. Let's walk around this side here. Sure. Take so your... on, on the hubcaps here. Yeah. What is that? So the mm -hmm. Cadillac is, is the original Cadillac logo, and then it has an 8 kind of superimposed in there. Oh, for the V8. For the 8-cylinder eight engine. That was how you, Cadillac kind of did a little bit of showiness advertising, I guess. Okay. That this was an 8-cylinder Cadillac. Now, did that have anything to do with these black dots that were... Uh, uh, no, nope, those, those actually are part of the drivetrain. Uh, oh. the, the, the artillery wheel attaches in, and the hub is what drives it, but then the brake drum, the black piece in, in behind there, yeah. that's actually the brakes, and that's what stops the car, Okay, is the brakes are internal to that. So that's ah. your kind of your attachment for brake system. Now, moving down here, you do have a cover that was screwed closed. Is that what's underneath there? Uh, there's actually one of those uh, grease cups oh, grease underneath okay. there that you can get into. And then on this side, you had a neat, uh, same thing on the driver's side. We right. didn't talk about it, but what's underneath these ones? This side is actually the toolbox. There's a small little toolbox area that you would have gotten a set of tools with your Cadillac. Okay. And then what was also unique to Cadillac was they gave you an air pump that ran off the transmission of the oh, engine. to pump up your tires. To pump up your tires. So the tire gauge and the fitting for that tire pump uh, system is inside of this toolbox. Okay. Uh, the driver's side, the, the compartment is for the battery. The storage battery okay. is on that side. Okay. But this side was your toolbox. Oh, man. So. I love all those cool little details. Now, yeah. The, the lamps, gadgets. The, the lamps up here, um, that was just to, what, give a little just side light? Just a little light side light, yep. They're called there. cowl lamps, and that's just to have some side light. It's kind of a magnified jewel in there. I, I, I was going to say, I mean, I, I can't imagine that you would get really good light <laughs> not driving not any lot. of these early cars, <laughs> no. right? <laughs> It's okay. just a suggestion. <laughs> yes, yes, it's a suggestion. I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, so... I, I, I like buttons, dials, and oh, gauges. Okay. You're like I'll, me. I'll, I'll, I, yes, you're welcome. Thank you. So let's start with uh, on the far left. Okay. Okay, and then just kind of describe each thing coming all the way across. All the, the way clock. across, sure. So uh, on the very far left, you have your headlamp switch. Okay. Which would be your cowl lights, headlights. The one on the to the right is the actual ignition switch for turning okay. the starting the engine on and off. Mm -hmm. uh, coming across, you've got three gauges. The bottom left one is for the fuel pressure. It uses an air pressure system okay. uh, back in the gas tank to bring fuel up to the carburetor, and that gives you an indication of how much pressure that system has in it. And okay. we'll, I'll tell you a little more about that in just a second. The second one on the bottom is the oil pressure gauge for the engine. Yeah. And then the top one is your ammeter, which tells you what that generator is doing, whether it's charging or draining the battery. Okay. Of course, the big one, speedometer and odometer. Then this is a hand air pump. This is what you use to start the car. Okay. Uh, what you needed to do is the, the uh, fuel system, rather than having a pump to pump fuel up to the engine like a traditional uh, car would have, it uses air pressure and you have to prime that system a little bit to get the fuel to be pushed up to the carburetor. Okay. And that's what this hand air pump does, is you pump this up until that gauge, that bottom left gauge, reads about one pound of pressure. And then that's enough pressure to push fuel up to the carburetor, you can start the engine. 
once the engine's running, there's a small air pump on the very front of the engine that will sit there and run and keep the pressure up okay. for the car to continue running. So this is just strictly to uh, get that system started and running. So that's fascinating. Yep, that's what that does. These two little domes here are actually dash lights. Dash lights right? Yep, they just light up real, real dim for seeing your gauges while you're driving in the dark. And then this is your Waltham eight-day clock. This is actually an original one that I had cleaned and restored. The face and hands, believe it or not, are still original. The mechanics just needed a good cleaning inside. But that has been running now for, I'm going to say, four days. And if wow. you notice, that thing is spot on. It is. I've got 22 after 12, and that thing's right on the money. So you got your power in a minute, you've got your seconds, seconds, and this was the day. No, that's actually an indicator to tell you if it's time to wind it or not. It, oh. There's a little, you, you won't see it until it actually runs down, but that little eye in there yeah. will turn red. It'll, it, as the spring oh, really? winds down, it'll get to a point where that little thing will turn red all of a sudden, and then you're like, oh, I got to wind the clock. Wind. So you come oh, out and wind it back up. Oh, all those little so. details. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. You've got on the three wheel column, you've got mm -hmm. a lever. Yep, that's the strangler, or as we like to call it in modern days, the choke. Oh, okay, so sure. Okay. They, they actually right. refer to it as the strangler, uh, and it basically it just shuts the airflow off to the carburetor so you get a, an enriched gas mixture to start it, but they call it a strangler. <laughs> okay, so then of course you got your gear shift lever. Yep. Got your parking brake. Handbrake. Okay, right next to the parking brake in the floor, there's a, there's a giant, looks like a screw. This little screw guy right here? Yeah. That's for that air compressor I was telling you about to char to run the uh, tire pump. Okay. That you turn that with this big screwdriver, and that engages a little gear off the back of the transmission, or sorry, off the front of the transmission. Okay. And that starts running a little compressor that's right, right down in here, and then it pumps air over to that tire uh, spot. So you didn't actually have to dirty your hands back open. Oh, no. You would just turn no, no, the no, no. I love it. No, no. Okay. You've got an assortment <laughs> of, it's kind of like the... Um, 31 flavors, the Baskin Robin of pedals. Oh, well, um, yeah. You've, yep, you've yep. got uh, <laughs> like six pedals down there, so tell us what they do. So, this is the top one here is for your electric start. That's what okay. engages the starter against the flywheel to start the engine. Yeah. You've got a foot rest on the black, that's okay. just to kind of rest your foot on. You've got a standard accelerator gas pedal, like what your modern cars have, a brake, and a clutch. Okay. Um, Cadillac. You know, they're in, in 15, 16, and, and for many years, they were considered the standard of the world. Well, this was part of their standardization was to develop left-hand drive, okay. which we know is modern. But they also had a standard set of pedals and levers and controls for the car. So they tried to very much standardize that and bring that to all the other uh, car mates. So that was their standardization portion of it so you know and that carries true to today you look at any modern car yep. that has a stick shift transmission they've got a clutch a brake and a gas pedal yep so all right windshield is that it does you know, tilt out open up okay it does tilt yep. out there's two sections it'll tilt the bottom tilt the top or you can do either one yep or both okay if you want ventilate a lot of ventilation blowing in your face okay <laughs> yeah well some days some days you might some days you might all right Let's go up to the front. All right. All right, so Annie, a couple more questions. Sure. We're always curious about you know, how did you get into cars in the first place? Well, honestly, I grew up in the trade. Um, okay. Not to say my dad made me, but my dad made me, for yeah. lack, for a short answer. Um, I really did get started and bitten with the bug uh, probably seven, eight years old. Okay. Um, you know, dad and I were always hanging out in the shop together. Mm -hmm. we, were, we were very blessed growing up that we were able to build a little... Uh, extra two and a half car garage right next to our house so mom didn't have to worry about where I was because she always knew I'd be yeah, out in the shop, shop turning wrenches or getting greasy um, and as I got older and into high school and stuff I ended up finding friends and people that were also into cars okay. and so we would always hang out and be around cars and so really I tell people now I don't bleed blood I bleed 10w30 so <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> So, yeah, so that's really how I got, got it started with it. Okay, so, so now, w we know the story of how you got the Cadillac. So yep. that's, that's, sometimes we like to ask, well, why did you pick a Cadillac to collect? Well, it was selected for it you. Was, it was already there. Right, I inherited the car, so yeah, it, yeah. So what is one of your favorite memories about this car? Oh, gosh. Um, 
there's so many. <laughs> oh, and this doesn't have to be your most favorite. It's just okay. a favorite. So I'll tell you one of my most terrifying. How's that? Okay. So this is good, but it's also terrifying. So originally, they had what these motometers on the car. This is basically a thermometer right. that goes down into the antifreeze to tell you how hot, basically, the engine's running. So Don had found this original style one, and it's still very much original. Uh, for the car, but the little red tube in it had split apart over the years because it had okay. laid on its side, upside down, been bumped around. So we never figured out how to fix it. You know, we had set it up right, got it hot, got it cold, right. trying to get those little red pieces to move to go back together and, and re make one okay. solid, basically. Um, the only way I read online one time was to take the unit kind of apart and basically spin it, get centrifugal force going and spin it as hard as you could to get the, you know, centrifugal force to push all the red back down into the bottom of the, the thermometer part and then it would come back up as one solid segment. None of us had the guts to do it. <laughs> Don wouldn't do it. My dad wouldn't do it. I was terrified to do it because this is a, a one of a kind thing. You're not going to replace this. I don't remember, but one day I got a hair up my butt to go try and figure out to make this work. And so I took it, we had it apart, I tied some metal tie wire around the, the uh, uh, motometer, around okay. the steel part of it, and took it out in the backyard, hooked it up to my dog's leash and spun the crap out of that over my head for about two or three minutes. I mean, I'm whipping this thing around as hard as I can. And I'm like, okay, if it's going to go, it's going to go flying off, it's going to hit something, and we're done. Yep. You know. So a couple minutes of that, went, brought it, slowed it down, picked it up, and sure enough, it was back to working. And it has worked ever since. And so that's probably my ah. most terrifying but interesting part <laughs> of, of car. this car. So don't try this at home. Yeah, don't try this at home unless you absolutely know what you're doing. But <laughs> or, 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 or you have, or a, you spare. have a spare. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, so. Andy, gosh, thank you so much for yeah. spending your time Nathan, and thank your you. story with us with this yeah. beautiful car, this multi generational Cadillac. We sure appreciate it. Well, you're very welcome. I'm glad you stopped by. And thanks for watching.